Hi, welcome to Museum of America. I'm your host, Manny Gentili, and this episode we're here in Buffalo, New York, aboard the famous World War II destroyer, the USS The Sullivans, which is now a museum ship. Whether they're called Greyhounds of the Sea, Small Boys, or even Tin Cans, what's in back of me, the USS The Sullivans, is what's officially referred to in the Navy as a destroyer. The destroyer is the type of ship that's been with our Navy the longest. Starting out just over a hundred years ago as fast torpedo boat destroyers, they protected the coal-fired ships of the main battle line from small, swift, and lethal torpedo boats. The destroyer evolved in World War I as the speedy and powerful nemesis of German U-boats and had a crucial role in escorting vital convoys to Europe. World War II saw that anti-submarine mission continue and also saw the role of destroyers expand to include surface warfare, search and rescue, shore bombardment, carrier screening, and early warning and defense against Japanese suicide planes, the kamikazes. As the nature of warfare has changed, so is the main armament of the destroyer, from guns, to torpedoes, to anti-submarine weapons. Today, after a century of service, with over 950 Navy destroyers steaming through history, the destroyer weapon systems have evolved to a high-tech, remote control, missile and gun combination. But the role and the mission of the destroyer remains the same. An all-purpose fighting ship with great speed, endurance, and firepower. Just about all naval historians agree that the Fletcher class of destroyer was the most successful U.S. warship ever. These things were originally built for just five years of wartime steaming. Some of them sailed for almost 50 years. That's a good return on your investment. The Sullivans was built during the time when the Navy had a simple method for naming ships. Battleships were named after states, Arizona, Missouri, New Jersey. Cruisers were named after great American cities. Submarines were named after creatures of the deep, like Darter, Skate, and here, the Silver Sides. Ammunition ships, ironically, were named after volcanoes. Although that tradition has since fallen into some disuse, one class of vessel, the destroyer, continues to derive the name of each vessel from the name of a famous naval hero. The John Paul Jones, the Arleigh Burke, or in the case of destroyer number 537, the Fighting Sullivan Brothers of Waterloo, Iowa. In November of 1942, while serving aboard the cruiser USS Juno, the five Sullivan brothers lost their lives when the Juno was sunk off the Solomon's Islands by a Japanese submarine. To honor the service of these five sailors, Joseph, Francis, Albert, Madison, and George Sullivan, and to commemorate the sacrifice of the Sullivan family, the Fletcher-class destroyer launched on April 4th 1943 bore the name the Sullivans. The first time a naval vessel was named for more than one individual. Carrying the motto of the Sullivan brothers, we stick together, the Sully served with distinction during the final two years of World War II. And after an all too brief period of peace, the Sullivans fought the Cold War in Korea, off the shores of Lebanon, and during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Decommissioned in 1965, the Sully was placed in reserve to await further service to a grateful nation. Since 1977, that service has continued as the Sully became a museum ship here in Buffalo, providing a unique educational experience to tens of thousands of visitors every year. 
Through it all, the Shamrock insignia continues to remind all who come aboard of the proud Irish American heritage of the Brothers Sullivan. Whoa! Every year, a group of really dedicated volunteers from Tin Can Sailors and the Sullivan's Association get together here on the Sully in Buffalo, New York to spend a lot of time in elbow grease to do welding, chipping, painting, structural work to keep this baby afloat. Let's take a look at some of the tasks they're doing this working field day, shall we? Oh, come along! 